Hello, everyone. My name is Hagob Dantzigian. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to you about the actions of our club for the past uh, three months and the focus on the last two months after the explosion that hit Beirut. And I would like to also tell you where we are needing your help. Now, uh, this image has been seen worldwide. It's the stockpiles of our, uh, it's our grain reserves, actually, that gone, were gone in vain uh, through the sea or through fumes because of the explosion that happened. This explosion was the world's third largest explosion in inhabited areas, and it was the result of 2,700 tons of nitrate ammonium, ammonium nitrate that were carried on this ship, the MV Roses. Uh, the true story is still unknown to us, and the explosion was ignited by God knows what, but what it did is a huge disaster in Beirut, and we know what it did. Uh, the doors and windows were blown away in a radius of 15 miles. The destruction of 30 years of war uh, happened in a few seconds in the blast area. The explosion was so strong that my cousins called me that night from Cyprus asking me what was happening in Beirut because they had felt it uh, all the way 215 kilometers away from us on the Cyprus island. And yeah, this was the result of the destruction. Now our club has been extremely active. We started uh, a food support program in the previous year and it's an ongoing project. Uh, it's there to help us fight hunger. We also believe in education. Education is a must. Private schools in Lebanon are struggling to provide a high quality level of education. And uh, then on August 4th, when the explosion happened, we started a disaster response fund to help the population on the ground, either through building houses or providing them with supplies and so on. We've been active a lot uh, on health with hospitals issuing uh, global grants for the medical equipment and their medical needs. All of this is done in transparency and traceability uh, through digital platforms. So the food box program was started in October 2019. We started it because more than 55% of the Lebanese population was below poverty line. That number has been rising up and up due to the social instabilities and economical meltdown. Uh, according to the UN, we're expecting 65% of population below poverty line by the end of this year. We have met lovely people on the streets. We have been to beautiful houses and met beautiful souls. Our project is all around Lebanon. It is in cooperation of all the clubs, all of them in Lebanon. It is in very high cooperation with the rotor actors, whom I salute very much for their dedication uh, and unstoppable will to help. And we have 40 NGOs, more than 40 NGOs that are enrolled in this project with us. All Rotarians are on the ground whenever it's needed. And trust me, since the October 4th, it was very much needed. Now in the food box program, we've spent $100,000. We've provided supplies for roughly 80,000 meals just during the month of September. And that's a million meal a year. We have 28 clubs, uh, over 28 with us. We have eight Rotaract clubs, as mentioned, more than 40 NGOs. Our distributions are all around the country. There is a focus on Beirut because of the disaster. And well, on the disaster response fund, uh, we have started, first of all, distributing uh, cooking stoves, portable cooking stoves, uh, mattresses, beds and sheets, battery powered lamps, because you need to understand that Many people who had their houses completely destroyed refused to leave because whatever was assets they had in the house, they had to protect them from theft. So this is, this is why we're helping those people. There is an estimated budget of $5 billion of property damages. 200 people died and uh, three are still missing, by the way. And more than 6,500 people were injured in this explosion. So we're taking action. We have issued partnerships with NGOs that are on the ground and that are taking care of the rehabilitation. We have a target of $45,000 a month, that's 30 houses a month, for the average ticket of $1,500 per house. We've already completed 30 houses and we need your help in raising funds in order to come up with this, uh, this problem, knowing that uh, we have, as we mentioned earlier, the 5 billion 
dollars of property losses we will need to eventually this country will need to build up. Our methods of work are very simple. The NGOs who are registered with us submit their files. Uh, our engineers, uh, we have engineers in our club who are voluntarily getting involved. We're checking the files, both on an economical and social perspective, studying the case by case of every single family to make sure that we are giving the help to the needy families. So we really take care of the special cares for uh, special needs first. We're doing this in all transparency, and we really hope that these houses will be soon uh, rebuilt. This is a very old house. It's a hundred years old plus house, and uh, though it stood for uh, centuries in Lebanon, it was gone now uh, just in a few seconds because of the blast. On a population level, we focused a lot on the mother. So we thought about diapers and milks for their babies and their comfort through mattresses and blankets and pillows and cooking stoves and battery power lamps. So on the diapers and milk for babies, we have a budget of $7,000 a month. On the battery power lamps and other accessories, we have $5,000 a month, uh, dollars uh, of budget a month. The NGOs that have been doing the deliveries of diapers are doing by far more than this. This is just that what you see in this picture, picture is, is not just a support for those families who are unable to pay for the diapers. It's also providing happiness and love to all these kids. And in the meantime, the parents are getting the mattresses and the cooking stoves and the other accessories that we're gradually distributing in the needed uh, areas. Now, going to schools, we have visited schools after the explosion, four of them to be accurate. We've studied, we've checked their numbers, their financials, the, the reports and the cost of their rehabilitation. Uh, they urgently need us. The budgets are huge. Uh, we're not expecting ourselves to be able to do these, but we, the more you can help us, the better it would be. Uh, we are anyways focusing on helping those schools with their fundraising. It's heartbreaking visiting those schools, and we did visit them. We did visit them, and then we realized something. All the computers had fell on the ground. Uh, the, the laptops, the, the desktops, the, the screens, everything from the blast had fallen on the ground. And the servers... Even the server rooms, the servers had just stopped uh, booting because, well, they got damaged by the shockwave. And with the COVID-19, it, really it really became clear to us that this is where we have to put our efforts on in financing the schools. So uh, we realized that schools will not be able to do their Zoom meetings if, with their students if they don't have the proper IT infrastructure. And this is where we're helping. We've already completed the first project. We have other projects that you can help us uh, finance and rehabilitate, help us uh, rehabilitate uh, the schools in their IT like we did. In the hospital levels, the hospitals were really hit badly uh, by, the, by the blast. We are working on issuing global grants with partner clubs abroad. And we are also participating in all global grants that are done by other clubs in Lebanon to also help uh, two of the hospitals uh, that are two of the, I would say, five major hospitals that have been hit while we're helping the two other first. And this is what the hospital room looked like uh, right after the explosion. Now, we also would like to thank, uh, to thank you, all of you who have been helping us by sending us medical supplies. We have been parsing them and delivering them all around all the hospitals that are in need with many other clubs hand in hand. Hand in hand because we believe in collaboration. It's hand in hand that we will be able to create a strong impact. We are cooperating with the NGOs, providing them whatever assistance we can do in order to let, let them do their work in a smoother and uh, faster way. Now, what's next? What we are working on is the hot meals. We have the initiative, the hot kitchen. It's, the concept is very simple. We had the World Central Kitchen that came to Lebanon, stayed here, stayed here for a month and was delivering up to 10,000 hot meals a day. Now, they left. There is a huge need. There is a big chunk of the population, specifically in the affected areas, that are unable uh, to cook from themselves. So we have to help them. It's a project that will be running on three months. Our target is to reach 1%, is to reach 10% uh, of the total needs. That would be 1,000 meals a day. Last week, we did 100 meals a day. This week, we're doing 300 meals a day. And as mentioned, we are aiming at this $30,000 a month budget that you can help us by contributing or helping us in our fundraising. 
We're doing this in collaboration with Sawa Blast, which is the NGO that was initially helping the World Central Kitchen. And this is done in cooperation with Chef Aline Kamakian. Aline is a very dear friend. And she wrote the following on her Instagram, which I think is worth reading. And I quote her, two months ago, this blew up in our face. I was standing here and I helped my loved ones and strangers like everybody here in Beirut. Today, I remember this as we're, uh, this is as where our lives changed. Today we are rebuilding. Our bodies are healing slowly but surely. Our businesses are getting rebuilt also slowly but surely. And this is thanks to the effort of the volunteers and thanks to your donations. Aline lost her ear in one on her left ear because of the explosion. She was probably in one of the closest properties to the explosion. Her restaurant is gone and yet she did not stop. She is helping and she is contributing herself as well as all the partners and the other NGOs that are helping us. We really need your help. So we, we thank you and we thank all the partners that are on the ground, all the NGOs that are helping us. Thank you so much for having been with us. We need your help in fundraising for schools, hospitals, food boxes, and all the other needs of the Lebanese population in these very hard days. You can reach us on our different social medias, our website, uh, or just drop us an email and we'd be glad to help. Thank you.